Mr. Tang, Mr. Pei, Mr. Ambassador, and friends. It is a great honor to be able to meet with you tonight. One of the great fortunes of my life is that I got to know the Chinese people. And uh, on my first trip to China, when I had very little experience, I said something about China being a mysterious country. And Joe and Light said to me, what is so mysterious about China? There is a billion of us, and it is not mysterious to us, he said. That was a very profound remark. <laughs> and so I have now observed this relationship. And I want to congratulate I am Pei and the other members of the Committee of 100 for dedicating themselves nearly 30 years ago to strengthening the cultural and political and commercial ties between our two countries. It is a relationship that started with a consciousness that we both faced a common danger. And it has now evolved in an extraordinary way. First, when I first came to China, if somebody had shown me a picture of what Beijing and Shanghai and other cities look like today, and if somebody had said to me, the Chinese people are going to do this, in 20 to 30 years, I would have said that this is crazy, that cannot be done. But it proves that any great achievement needs an inspiration before it becomes a reality. And the dedication of the Chinese people to their culture, to their future, has been inspiring to watch. And in our relationship between America and China, it started out, as I said, with the consciousness of a common security problem. In those days, there was next to no trade between China and the United States. As late as 1976, our trade with Central American countries was larger than with China. Today, we interact all over the world. And today, we are in this position. Both our countries live in a world of turmoil. There are upheavals occurring everywhere for different reasons. And we also interact, and sometimes we step on each other's toes. That is inevitable. But we have learned that the cooperation between China and the United States is essential for the peace of the world and for the progress of the world. Neither of us can gain permanently from confrontation. Both of us can only benefit from partnership. And the presidents of both countries 
have dedicated themselves. President Xi, in a number of remarkable statements about the relationship of potentially adversarial countries becoming partners. President Obama has spoken in the same sense. President Xi will pay a state visit to the United States later this year. And great progress should be made in these circumstances. So what started out with a common fear is now turning into a common opportunity. And it is crucial that both our countries continue to work on this prospect. Because if we don't, the whole world will be divided. But if we do as we are doing, then we can have a great future for our people and for mankind. So this is why it is inspiring to be here to see the men and women who had this vision three decades ago and have now re seen it come true. And we can hope that even greater things will be achieved in the future. I've, of course, known IMP for many decades. And he has been an inspiration, and he will leave his legacy all over the world. But one of his legacies is this group. And we want to thank, thank him for it. And the Chinese ambassador who is here has uh, represented his country with an enormous skill and he has con contributed in an extraordinary fashion to this relationship. So to all of you here who are devoted to this aim, I, we, I am certain that 30 years from now, when I am paying and I visit you again, <laughs> we can brag about even more tremendous things that have been achieved. Thank you all for inviting me, and congratulations.